What's going on guys, Daniel from ModBot here and today I'm super excited to show you guys this printer right here. This is the Artillery Sidewinder X1. Uh, it's not every day that I have a printer that really comes my way that I review and am completely blown away. Well, this is one of those crazy exceptions. So stick around and find out what I think of this machine. <music> So for those of you that want to just have two seconds and leave the video with a just general thesis of this printer, I love this printer. This printer has surpassed all of my expectations. Um, let's go ahead and do a breakdown kind of of what this machine has to offer and then I'll talk a little bit about how I first heard of this machine and my whole experience with the machine so far. So as far as build volume goes, it's nothing too crazy. It's kind of the standard. Uh, and I will say this machine definitely gets a lot of its inspiration from the Creality CR10 line of machines, but has done oh so much with that. So it's a 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter build volume, similar to the CR10 line. And there are so many printers that I've been reviewing over the past year here that have been like copycat machines of the Ender 3 or of the CR10. And these other manufacturers don't really do a whole lot. They add their own little twist on it and then sell the machine, but they're pretty much taking most of the work that Creality's done and just kind of recycling that idea. Well, again, at first glance, this might look like one of those machines as well, but it is not. There is a lot going on here. And so let me, again, get into that. So we've got the build volume down. Things that are awesome about this machine that are just different. So the build surface on this is like a black diamond glass. It's similar to what's on the JG Aurora A5S. It's similar to what's on the Anycubic i3 Mega. This is and has been one of my favorite build surfaces to ever exist. If it's not like BuildTech or PEI um, on a flex plate system, this black diamond glass to me is the bomb. I love it so much. I think that uh, most materials adhere incredibly well to this and they give a nice bottom finish but they also pop off relatively easy once the part has cooled. So that is one thing it has. It has got 20 by 60, yes, that's right, 20 by 60 extrusions on the X axis on, and on the Y axis, which is huge. A lot, of a lot of the companies are just using 20, 20 or 20, 40, but this is 20 by 60, which in my opinion possibly is overkill, but I don't care, I love it. It is just such a rigid machine. So it's got massive extrusions. It's got, of course, dual Z-axis uh, lead screws with anti-backlash nuts on the back. Um, it's got a belt-driven connected top portion, which is really cool. We've got touchscreen user interface, which is always a nice perk. I like that everything is nice and enclosed underneath with, of course, 24 volt system. It's got a USB slot as well as a micro SD card slot, which again, I don't even think is necessary. One or the other is fine, but I'll take both of them. I'm not upset that they did that. Um, the uh, cable management is so beautiful on this. They use these little ribbon cables, which yes, is similar to that of the CR10S Pro, but I'm not upset that they also went ahead and used that. I think it's really, really clean. Um, and just to me, the nicest looking setup really for cable management that I've seen on 3D printers up to this point. Um, it's a direct drive system. And yes, I didn't, didn't stutter. That is, it is a direct drive system, which I have hardly, I, I kid you not, I've probably reviewed something like 40 3D printers in the last four or five years. And the percentage of them that are direct drive is really, really slim. And this is the only direct drive really that I've seen that uses this kind of, uh, again, Creality-esque style frame. And for me, I, I love direct drive so much. To me, having a smaller pathway between the extruder and the hot end leaves so much less room for uh, jamming or any kind of issues. And it also, uh, I think that if you want to print a lot of flexible filaments, yes, you can do it on a Bowdoin system with a good extruder. That is uh, a fact. But to me, this is still the superior uh, setup. And so, it's got a Titan style uh, extruder, which is awesome. It's worked so well. You've got a fan right here to cool the heatsink and a massive, uh, I believe it's like a 2040, maybe in the 3040 blower fan um, that goes and blows onto the nozzle, uh, which leads me to my next kind of cool thing that it has. It has a volcano block, which uh, volcano is a type of hot end from E3D that's got a larger heating block than the standard E3D V6, which is their other hot end. And so the nozzle is almost, I believe, twice as long. 
which basically means there's a higher uh, range of uh, melting, like more surface area for basically melting the filament, which means that technically you should be able to print quicker because you can lay down and melt plastic quicker and more efficiently. Uh, it also means that with those nozzles, you can get massive nozzles up to, I think like 1.2 millimeter if you wanna just lay out all sorts of crazy amounts of uh, plastic. So uh, I, I love it. I, to me, that is something that is super cool. The combination of the direct drive with the Volcano nozzle is just absolutely awesome. There's also an RGB LED on the uh, nozzle, around the nozzle, which basically acts as a status. So you can see kind of when it's heating up, when it's ready to print. It has a little dim light on while it's printing, which is not enough to be annoying if you're in the same room, but just enough to see your print if it is uh, nighttime, which is awesome. Um, it's got optical end stops, so there's no physical limit switches. They're actually optical, which again, is just a small thing, but it's really cool. We've got insulated bed, so it heats up incredibly quick. Filament runout sensor. I mean, there's probably things I'm missing still, but this thing, it's super quiet too. It is incredibly quiet. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. And the price, which is the sweetest point, is $400. And yes, it is more expensive than a Creality Ender 3, no doubt. But to me, this is a lot more machine than a Creality Ender 3. And do I think that you know, this needs to replace all the Ender 3s out there? Absolutely not. But if you need something that's bigger, that's got direct drive, if you're looking to upgrade, this machine is just absolutely insane. I have been blown away by this machine. So let's backpedal a little bit now that you've heard all that and kind of talk a bit about this. So the company is Artillery, which I had never heard of before. I don't think anybody has. Um, they were new, at least relatively new, I feel, to 3D printing. And I started seeing this machine popping up in my Twitter feed. Uh, a lot of people in the community started posting their photos of this. I know that Tom Jackson got one and did some amazing, just incredible prints with this machine. Um, there's uh, Make It With Calvin got one and he was doing some crazy stuff. So I started seeing all of these different prints coming off of this that were just incredible. and seeing the direct drive and seeing the volcano, it didn't take me long to know that like, yes, this is a machine that I really, really want to get my hands on. And again, I review a ton of printers and I'm excited for a lot of them, but a lot of them I'm just kind of like, okay, we'll see. But this one I was hyped on. I actually reached out to Artillery a couple of times before I heard back and they agreed to send me one. So, and that is not common. I, I don't typically like go aggressively after a printer, but this one I saw it and was like, no, I need to test it. I need to see if it's as awesome as everyone seems to think it is and give my feedback on this machine. So machine showed up right before I was moving apartments. Uh, it probably showed up five days before I was supposed to move. And I told myself no building of things until you're settled in a new place because then I'm just gonna have to disassemble or, or figure out how to move it. And um, of course I got home the same day and I assembled it and uh, leveled it. It's not automatic bed leveling, which I really don't care about. I honestly like manual leveling a lot. Um, it leaves less room for potential software issues. And I know that if I level it, it's going to work. And I've only had to level this guy once, I think in the whole time I've had it. And I've got a ton of hours under this uh, machine, but it's just got the four, uh, four bed leveling screws. So I went ahead and leveled it and I went ahead and printed out a tiny little just test cube, which of course turned out perfect. Uh, and then I hopped over to Kira, the latest Kira, and I sliced up a massive print out of PLA that was I think total 24 to 26 hours or something like that in Vertigo Galaxy, which I've been saving that filament for something special, but <laughs> this machine I knew, I was like, all right, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna do the, bring out the good filament for this one. So I printed out the model, which was of uh, this girl. I can't think of the artist right now, which breaks my heart. I'll have to put it in the video because the modeler is awesome and deserves full credit. Um, but I went ahead and printed that out, which it turned out awesome. The machine did a phenomenal job, but I forgot to put supports. And so instead of having long hair, she has kind of like a shortcut. So uh, she still looks fantastic. The model turned out great, um, but I printed that out followed by this awesome print, which do I have it right here somewhere? I don't. Um, this crazy white, like demon-esque thing that I found uh, in PLA that was also another, I think, 24. 526 hour print uh, roughly as well. Uh, I followed it up with a couple other PLA prints and seriously, everything I threw out this, it just printed beautifully. I also created this um, AC vent system for my window in PLA 
uh, as well as ASA, which um, it's going to be a completely separate video, but those prints were 26 hours a piece because I did one and my tolerances were off, so I had to print another one. I, I've probably got about 150 hours of print time on this printer and it has just done incredible. I also did a really large PETG print, which I do think that if you're gonna do a lot of PETG or PTG, you should upgrade because it is not an all metal hot end. Um, so you will wanna upgrade that, but I was able to do roughly a 10 hour PTG print, which turned out awesome. Um, I also started playing around a little bit with some flexibles, but the unfortunate thing with that is the only flexibles I have are from SaneSmart, this old TPU up here, and I've had it for probably three years now, and it has not been in a uh, dry box, and it has been out, so it's very dusty. So I did run a little bit through here, but it was coming out so uh, like so uh, kind of steamy from the moisture it's absorbed that I decided that I need to get some new uh, flexibles. So I'm going to be probably picking up some TPU and following up with a uh, TPU print on this guy, but. Seriously, this machine has been absolutely awesome. I think that as of right now, if I needed a machine that was bigger than the Ender 3, uh, but still wanted to you know, have a budget 3D printer, that without a doubt, this is where I'd be going. The Art Artillery Sidewinder X1 Series League gives two thumbs up from me. Um, with all those good things I've said though, there are a few things that I do want to at least make uh, kind of known, so that way you guys have a heads up. Uh, there's a few, there's like one thing that I noticed that I wasn't crazy about, and it's this spool holder right here. So I like what they were going with it. It's basically got two halves to it with bearings. So you set the filament down and it rolls very nicely through the filament runout sensor and downward. The issue is, is that to move them side by side, there's two little uh, Allen screws and they're on the back of the printer, which is just super inconvenient to get to. Um, so what I ended up doing was basically having a filament spool holder on the side of this that I then fed over into that and downward or I bypassed the filament runout sensor altogether. Um, what I'd probably recommend doing is just printing out a different spool holder for the top of this so that way you can use different size spools without having to move it. Uh, I just don't think, I think they had a good idea but the execution, unless you're using one company spool, like if you use the same spools and it's the same diameter then this is fantastic it works really well but me i've got everything from small big large awkward you know all these different size spools since there's not a standard per se that this just doesn't work uh, ideally for me another thing that i've noticed uh from a uh, at least from one person on youtube uh devin from make anything who is someone in the industry that just is a creative all around an awesome dude that i respect his opinion heavily on his, this part right here was actually 3D printed and was damaged in shipping. Well, on mine, this is actually injection molded. So I would like to point out that since he's made that video, it does seem like they have taken that feedback into consideration and have gone ahead and replaced this. Um, the only other thing that I've seen, uh, I actually had a customer at work call the other day, and I've also seen someone else mention is that somebody had an issue with their overall movement or reading. And it ended up being that on this ribbon cable, one of the pins was slightly bent. So make sure that if slash when you do pick up this printer, you inspect the ribbon cables because although they are great for you know clean cable management, I think that once they're in place, they're gonna be fine for going back and forth. There's not any real tension that's being put on them. Um, the pins are the most sensitive portion and they do provide spares for the big ribbon cables. So you know I'm not too worried, I've got spares of all of them, but definitely make sure to check that because that can cause a lot of headache uh, and again, hopefully that's something that they are taking the feedback and doing on. They've been really, really active with the community and, uh, you know, taking things that people are saying and uh, making sure to update the machine to incorporate those things. So again, hats off to Artillery. I don't know how a company that comes up out of nowhere can get this many things right, because to me it's like pretty ballsy what they did. Um, it also has, the last thing I should probably mention, it has an MKS Gen L board. Uh, and again, I don't know what the exact drivers are, but the drivers are freaking quiet. This is by far the quietest machine that I own and I, I love it, seriously. So if you're looking for a machine, seriously can't recommend this enough. Links will be in the description down below to where you can find out more and purchase one for yourself. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And if you wanna support the channel, I will place Patreon links in the description down below. I've got some awesome rewards and some really cool stickers that I am shipping out now. So 
On that note, thank you guys always so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace guys.